I'd like to welcome you to episode one of the Talking Schemes podcast. Today I'm going to be joined by Coach Scott. He's from the Madden League USFL, the Madden League I run on Xbox Next Gen. He's been one of our most outstanding players over the past year. I believe he joined at the end of 21. And he is known for running his Fangio 3-4 defense and his wide zone offense. He's also the biggest Packers fan I think I've ever met. But first, a few questions. How did you get into football and football video games? Yeah, so um, as a byproduct of, of being from Wisconsin, um, it's essentially expected you are going to become an avid Packer fan. Um, and I, one of the silly things, I, I was looking at your questions before we, we talked today, and I just remembered a, a conversation or at least a, an assignment we had like in first grade, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And like, if you were a guy and somewhat like athletically inclined, like your career objective was to be a Green Bay Packer. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I mean, that's where, where football really started for me. I mean, you know, where college football, like especially in the South, like the SEC country, you know, how avid of a fan base that is, that is what Green Bay football is in Wisconsin. So um, you, you're kind of born into that specifically. Uh, but when it comes to football video games, um, really it was, you know, some of my friends that have like tech mobile or whatever way back in the day, which is dating myself to a certain degree. But, um, I didn't even get, a um, my own copy of a football game until like Madden 64. Um, and candidly, I've never been a team other than green Bay, except for a very select few games over that period of time. <laughs> That's pretty fantastic. Have you always tried to emulate what the Packers were doing at the time? Depends on my level of knowledge of football at that given time. So, um, in short, yes. Um, now, when it comes to like college football games, I actually emulated what my high school, the high school I was um, either playing with or coaching with. Um, head run at that respective time because those schemes are available in like NCAA but when it came to NFL football I definitely tried to emulate whatever the Packers scheme was and for the vast majority of, of that time period it was some version of a West Coast offense. When did you start studying real football schemes and was it specifically the West Coast offense when you did? Uh, not specifically the West Coast offense. So it really came about um, after high school. So as I got into uh, got into college, um, I declared early as a coaching minor, um, and I had started working with my old high school to be um, an assistant coach there, position coach, and then also work with middle school. Eventually, took over as the head coach of the, the middle school team and was the um, secondary coach for varsity um, as well when I was was going to college. So um, at that point, at the very least, was really trying to master our system. And our, our system at that time was uh, they were a triple option offense. And when it, come, when it came to um, the other side of the ball, it actually re- replicated to a very simplified um, perspective a Miami um, four three, so like we had an over front, but with a wide nine, everybody's on a tilt stance. We're trying to pinch and spill everything to the outside, and they were. I mean, we never learned a coverage outside of cover zero, right? Like you have your person, you identify <laughs> your person by formation, and you cover them uh, instead of having to learn complicated rules. Because at the time, all of the teams that we had played were some form of wing T or flex bone or you know, insert name of running offense here. So there wasn't a lot of complicated passing um, schemes that we had to defend. Um, And, you know, like at least when I was playing in in high school, um, where I excelled was on the defensive side of the ball. So um, 
had in a, a league that never passes. I had three interceptions my senior year. So <laughs> fantastic. Uh, who are some of the coaches you've admired and taken from in your development? Could be maybe someone you literally coach for, or it could be someone you watched on Saturday or Sunday that you said, I love what he does here, X, Y, Z. I want to do that too. Um, so from a personal perspective, leadership perspective, uh, my high school football coach, like I came out of, of high school, essentially setting a career path to become him, right? Uh, I had uh, declared my teaching intent. So I was going to become a history teacher as a vehicle to get to football coach. Um, and as part of that, um, there was a, a coaching minor, you know, at the college that I went to and you know, I had taken coaching of football 284, which is the easiest A I ever got in college. Um, <laughs> as well as like, I would go to practice field when our our college team, it was D3 football uh, in Wisconsin for college. And I would go and I'd watch practice. I would document, you know, what drills they're doing and try to steal things from there um, to either implement with because I would go from classes and I would drive 25, 30 minutes to where I used to go to high school and I would coach football there. So I would steal what I can from them and practice maybe some drills that we weren't doing that might fit what we, we tried to accomplish from a schematic perspective and replicate it with our kids um, and teach it to the best ability that we had. So, um, and part of that whole thing was the, the the passion that that our head coach had and that I had shared in in football. And you know, when you come from a, a schem- more of a schematic perspective, um, because I don't love option football, though that's what I initially learned um, from a schematic perspective. Um, and we'll talk about it, I'm sure, in a bit here. But I love the wide zone offense, um, particularly, you know, starting with the wide zone play um, for several reasons that I'm sure you'll ask me about, but um, I think it keeps us on schedule. I think it simplifies teaching um, for for kids that I had the luxury of for a short period of time of coaching a wide zone system um, outside of the virtual football that you and I experience now. Uh, but it's a system I, I know I pl- – you know, also apply a wing T kind of perspective or a flexible perspective of the if then, like if you do this, I'm going to beat you with this um, answer. And uh, and yeah, so you know, when it comes to coaches that influenced that side of the ball, obviously all of the Shanahan, you know, tree sort of spec. So Kyle Shanahan, um, Sean McVay, Matt Lafleur. Um, and then if you go more into the, um, the high school um, football coaching podcast world, uh, Nick Caduti, um, his explanation of covered uncovered rules um, really simplify things. And it's just like a huge light bulb moment for me where um, I've um, dabbled into the, um, the number system where, you know, based off of who your mic identification is, you're going to number individuals to whatever side of the ball to identify who you would block from a, a kind of a, a man blocking responsibility perspective with the wide zone play. And and one thing that I, I love about what Nick Caduti talks about is that the picture changes. So if they gap exchange in any one way, if they stunt from let's say in um, an odd front, you got you know four techniques heads up on the tackles, zero technique heads up on the center. And let's say they stunt one way or another, they stunt strong or they pinch in, right? That picture changes and, and with cover and cover rules, who takes that defender um, really simplifies the process versus you counting out to certain people and then kids have to figure out on the move who they are responsible to block. And so um, that helped me in a real life perspective, but also as you know, we, we translate it to Madden, whatever video games and the schemes are trying to replicate in these scenarios, um, it helped better understand exactly what I'm going to potentially see and get me into the best call possible at that point in time based off of what the defense is presenting. 
Awesome. Uh, quick question. How, coming from a triple option background and then going later to this wide zone approach, both are run first offenses that then do other stuff in the passing game kind of off of that. Um, what, in your opinion, makes the wide zone as a system more efficient or uh, more successful or better in any other way than the triple option offense you used to run? So if you're looking at triple option, you're, you are buying into 100% that I'm going to run the football and I'm going to beat you at um, running the football and being able to defend it, right? So with inside your uh, outside veer, um, if you're running um, any sort of a counter or whatever off that, if you're looking to trap somebody in, inside, what, whoever your read key is, right? Irrespective of all of that scheme, I am going to beat you with a run. And if I get in a long down in distance, then that really changes the math. Um, and when you look at wide zone as kind of predictable and, and, um, and trying to stay on schedule as much as possible as, you know, an option scheme would be right with wide zone, you really minimize the amount of negative plays that you have. So if a running back has any question about what lead might be because they're getting a bad hat read from an offensive lineman and they don't know if, if they really need to um, keep their path or, or cut inside of that respective read key um, th at the very least their default answer is to put your head down and get you know get a couple yards right um, so it really minimizes uh, negative plays there when you look at it from that perspective and it helps simplify the teaching that everyone is essentially doing the same thing so it's not over complicating okay we're we're okay if you're play side or we're gap down backer right um in terms of your progression of who you need to block and then we're pulling you know backside and depending on how many people you have you're pulling from backside to front side. Um, if you're kicking out, you're leading up into a hole and things like that get complicated. And then you have to rely on certain individuals' physical strength to displace a defensive player at the point of attack. Whereas even in the option offense and the wide zone offense, I am going to use your own defensive decisions against you. So if you were going to try to work so hard play side, that's great. Continue to do that. I will displace you front side. I'm going to cut off the back side, and I'm going to cut that ball vertical up the field. But if you look at an option offense, okay, read the, my read defender, let's say it's the defensive end and outside beer. If you go to the double option and you try to work to that, um, that back on that arc release, great. I'm going to cut that ball up in front of you or inside you and work vertically up the field for a positive gain. So if you're looking for a corollary between those two offenses, that's what it is for me. And it, I mean, aside from, I, I just prefer the, the answers you can get off of wide zone because of the passing game that you usually accompany it with. I, I think it, it gives you a lot more answers um, to different situational football than an option offense would. That leads me to the next question. In terms of Madden specifically, how has running the wide zone scheme evolved for you over time? So how did you run it maybe when you first started trying to bring it to Madden and how is that different than how you're approaching it now? So before I answer that in its entirety, the first thing that you really need to understand is that in Madden, there's very limited opportunities currently to ride to run wide zone um what exists predominantly in madden is outside zone so that changes the read keys for you um where in wide zone i'm usually never like if you're going against a three four defense which is in our league is very um prevalent um I, in wide zone i'm never reading that outside linebacker I'm reading the first down lineman 
on the end of the line of scrimmage and reading from him to the next person inside. Um, but for outside zone, it's a little bit different because um, you're really looking on the actual person on the line of scrimmage on the outside and reading one to two on the end um, from there. And so when I initially started running it, um, all the plays that are designed in Madden are, are designed to run strong side for outside zone. So, um, you know, I would, I would try to get numbers to play side so that way I can create potentially an extra gap, out gap the defense, um, which I still try to do to an extent, um, but would try to, you know, completely, um, buy into that plan and, and be mid to that plan and, and run it, it irrespective of what I saw. Um, and where I've evolved from there is not only being able to to Oscar or essentially as you look at the mad mechanics flip the run to the other side um, and it's that the Oscar is a specific verbiage within the wide zone offense to flip the run play um, or to flip the play in general um, I started to really identify the opportunities from what I saw not only in the first level but the second level to be able to um, run the ball weak with wide zone um, so as in, in real life where they're going to run wide zone to the strength and at times because of outside leverage they're going to run mid zone weak side so the aiming point of the back is going to be to the tackle not the tight end I replicate that into to a degree where I'm running outside zone or stretch to the strong side and the wide zone variations which are very few of in Madden 22 which luckily they're going to have a lot more of in Madden 23 from the beta um, so that way I can utilize that wide zone week um, to be able to run the exact same thing and make you wrong in whatever front you're in Awesome uh, can you walk us through a specific play adjustment or setup you run as part of the scheme that you feel that you have mastered mastery is a tricky part of that um i mean i guess you can't stop talking about the wide zone off it's about talking about the play itself you know let's talk wide zone um strong to the y or to the tight end uh, versus an under front so um you know, one of the challenges of wide zones is, you know, you want to create as many double teams to the front side of the play as possible because that's where the bread and butter is, right? I am going to, you know, either reach or horizontally displace you front side, cut off the back side, and by those combination blocks on the first level, whoever does not need to take over the block at the first level is going to climb to second level to the linebackers, in whatever um, you know, down safety or whatever other player rep, um, presents himself there, and continue to block those individuals on the path that they find them. And from a, a running back perspective, you're just reading off of that and reacting to flow. Um, but when we look at um, out or you know in Madden, where stretch really represents itself more often, so you're running outside zone where you're actually going to read that force defender more more likely than not. Um, and then under front, uh, let's just say a 3-4 under, that Sam linebacker, that strong sign linebacker, uh, is going to probably be in a, a nine technique just to the outside shade of the tight end. So I'm going to have, for the most part, solo blocks, at least on the, um, the Sam linebacker and that defensive end who's going to be in a five technique outside shoulder to the tackle where that guard and tackle are working to that end to look to climb to the near side linebacker. So as I, I'm reading that, I'm working outside in. I'm reading from the, the, the solo block on the Sam um, and I'm reading hat placement. If his hat's to the outside, I'm going to stay outside. If this has to the inside, I'm going to I'm gonna cut inside of that block and go to my next read key. And so as the running back is making a decision, they're going to make their decision on how they're going to cut by the third step. And that's including the drop step of the running back as they set their, their course or their path on the play. By their fifth step, 
Um, so that's going to be like a, a step and a half, essentially. And Madden, after the the mesh point with the quarterback, is when they're actually going to make the move to execute against the read. So if they're seeing inside hat placement by for, by the the tight end versus that Sam linebacker and that solo block, and let's say it's a guard tackle combination on the five technique defensive end, who again is aligned outside shade of the tackle. And that guard is is just trying to shove the piss out of that tackle um, to displace him front side and continue to work up to a linebacker. And that tackle still has an inside hat read. I'm cutting inside of that tackle vertical. I'm not cutting back. Wide zone, outside zone, it's not a cut back like inside zone is. right? I'm cutting vertical downfield. So this is a one-cut offense. I'm not dancing at all. It's a very decisive one to two and i'm going to get as north and south as fast as i can um and when i talked about running that week um and i know you and i have discussed this in other instances you know i'm looking for an open b gap right so if you're you're heavily predicated to stopping outside zone or you know wide zone depending on what variation i want to run that strong um and you're giving me that that open B gap week, and you don't have very good um, second level of support to defend that or to fill that gap. You're going to get wide zone week every single day, and I'm going to get exceptional yards against you. And I, um, I know that. God, I can't remember what a recent game that was. I want to say it was uh, Lions. Lions. He loves to shift strong. He loves to shift his the strength of the defensive line to linebackers to the strength of your offensive formation and just by audibling into different formations to replicate either a shift trade or motion um, i was able to manipulate his defensive front to get the look that i wanted to run against and so i ran against that open b gap weak side and i was getting you know, where I would see probably three, four, five yard gains, which is still staying on schedule for a wide zone offense, but running that the strong side, I was doubling those totals running it weak like when he would give me an open B gap and didn't have structurally enough second level support to defend that B gap. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah. What would you say are three strengths that you think that the wide zone scheme has over its competitors, all the other offensive schemes that are out there? So first and foremost, to stay on schedule, right? We talked about the, the minimalizing or minimizing, excuse me, um, negative plays, right? Because if, if the read is at all, at all cloudy, I'm going to get put my foot in the dirt, get north and south, and I'm going to get at least plus one. Um, so that way you're not dealing with second 11, second 13, or other types of things where you're going to have to change your offense and the defense can dictate more of what they see. Um, so that's the first thing. The second is the ability to stretch vertically and horizontally a defense in the same play. So let's utilize an example from Madden. Um, single back, wing slot, right so the the tw- the two tight ends the y and the um the wing tight end to the right twins to the left and i'm going to run leak so leak is um you're going to see a lot of the boot for the what they call movement play actions where the quarterback is going to fake one way and roll out to the other and they're going to flood coverage to the side the quarterback is rolling to with route concepts um, to um, stress the respective zone responsibilities of those defensive players. But leak is what that's doing front side when you, um, in that specific formation that I talked about, the Y or the, the tight end or your tight end one in your depth chart, right? He is going to work like he's almost going to be um, working to the side where the play action is continuing down the line of scrimmage for a second and then working his way vertical on the back side so we're having crossers and everything pulling to where the quarterback is rolling to yet i am going i have one route 
running to the backside and we let a route leak um, essentially in coverage and especially in match or man coverages that guy is going to be open wide open for an explosive play so that's where i love where i am i am stretching horizontally the defense by faking one way booting to the other or running a keeper to the other um, and flooding coverage one way but then vertically i'm stretching the field at multiple levels where and you know depending on the the route combination if it's um an inside stem and an outside breaking route by the number one receiver to that respective side that's usually the first read because if he's got leverage i can bomb it to him or i'm going to the the over route and then you know my check downs and depends by concept but i can have a slide from a backside tight end or fullback um, which is my my pressure release right there or i have a late um, a block and then kind of doing the little whip route deal and that's my late number four read in case you know all the rest of that is covered so I'm going to make you wrong one way or another but that vertically and horizontally stretches the defense all the very same play and that makes it very stress stressful for a defense um, in terms of their eye discipline and in terms of what they're calling from a structural perspective because that's a way I can really attack a defense is from a structural perspective. Um, so the the third thing there is I have multiple options, right? So I, I talked to a little bit earlier about, you know, applying the if then philosophy to this offense. So um, if you're, you're really going to, you know, the example I, I talked a little bit about earlier, if you're going to really sell it out to stop outside zone strong i'm gonna run wide zone weak which is my way of in a sense in madden running wide zone strong and mid zone weak um or if you're you're really selling out on that run i'm gonna boot out and then you have displaced your second level and i'm gonna attack that second level very hard um and throwing routes coming back the other way and you know, if even that's a, an issue as well, um, where you, okay, I identified you ran a, a play action to the left. I see a robot, which is roll over and back technique where you look, you, I realize, okay, the offense got me. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to look for the first crosser as like an inside linebacker, and I'm going to try to match and carry them over to the front side. That's fantastic because I'm hitting you with leak and the tight end that you just dropped off of your coverage responsibility as you stopped reading your respective keys from two to one, et cetera. Um, and I'm hitting him downfield for a, a big gain. So it's a, I, I love to scheme individuals open, and that's one of these things that these offenses really do is is make your eyes wrong and scheme open a, a receiver down the field and have multiple answers, not only in the run game, the play action game, but you know as we get into just drop back pass game, if um, you know these all these plays are built off of one another, they're gonna start out looking the same and they're gonna change. So how, how are you reacting some, to some of the things I'm going to show you initially, which is going to set up explosive plays down, down the road in my second half script. Now, some of the people that are listening are probably really excited right now. They want to get on Madden and they want to start running this wide zone offense. Um, but no offense is perfect. Every offense is going to have some areas of weakness and you got to, I'm sure you figured out some ways that you can cover them up. What would you say are three weaknesses that someone needs to be aware of when they start running the, the wide zone offense so that, you know, they can be prepared for what they need to have answers for that may be given a little bit of trouble. Um, to distill it down to the fundamentals is your reads. If you don't know how to read outside the excuse me, outside zone, wide zone, inside zone, and by the different pictures the defense gives you, um, it's going to be hard to set up the play action part of the game downfield. And if you can't get those two things working, you just took away 66% of your offense. Um, so that's where I would say those are the, the big things that you would need to educate yourself on. And 
I, I'm working on in like this um, offensive guy for wide zone and in delinquent and being able to make serious progress in a short period of time towards that. But in the in the interim, right, learn as much football as you can, right? There's in this day and age, I wish I had this when I was in college and a coaching minor where YouTube is a valuable resource as long as you're not looking at Madden YouTube videos, right? Unless these individuals are specifically talking about schemes and responsibilities and you playing out to how it's designed, my personal opinion is okay, then shit can all the rest of the stuff that you're going to see from people that are uh, their target is the mud head to head reg whatever they call it route go watch um, coaching clinics they're readily available all over youtube learn the scheme figure out how that translates into madden and then figure out how you can make it work from there what rating sizes skill sets etc do you look for at each position so just go top to bottom from qb through right tackle so QB, um, I only really care about accuracy and throw power. I don't need a Kyler Murray kind of guy. I, I say that specifically because I know you're like a Kyler Murray stan. Um, but like, I don't need that, that uh, mobility from a quarterback. I need you to be able to boot and move the defense with your movement. I have no real intent unless I've gone through four reads and you've covered them all up and you've not accounted for the quarterback in that math to actually run the football with the quarterback. So um, I, I, I want somebody who can deliver the ball quick and on time that's accurate. Um, when I look at uh, a running back, um, I don't care so much about having a high overall. Um, even even if we look at the different archetypes for the the schemes within Madden, like I don't absolutely need to have an elusive running back to make this offense go. Uh, um, so in our respective league, I have the Packers, right? And you've been trying to poach AJ Dillon for a hot minute. And I will stop you at every step of the way for two reasons. One, because he is a Packer in every way, shape, and form. Um, the type of character we want in that organization and a fan favorite as a result. Um, and that's a whole other diatribe that I could go down of what makes her a real Packer. But um, how that really makes money for me in Madden is... He's not overly fast. He's like an 88, 89 speed, depending on how quickly he develops into that. Um, I don't want to be fast to the hole. Everybody looks at outside zone, they're like, I got to get far up the outside. They want to reach, rip, reach and overtake, right? Uh, and get to that outside while you're, you're not understanding how the blocking's working. I'm going to be slow to the hole, fast through it. When I make a decision, if that's cloudy at all, AJ Dillon is a big freaking back to make his way through that first tackle and maybe get another yard or two to help keep me on schedule. But then when you have that and you have an Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones is that elusive back great in if he's releasing out into a route. Um, and I feel that those two complement themselves very well. And as you're going to see in this season, you're going to see A.J. Dillon more so in the lineup when I'm under center versus um, Aaron Jones when I'm in gun. Um, because I'm going to be very transparent. I don't care who knows it. Like, you're not going to see me run outside zone in gun. Um, in Madden especially, like, you're just doomed to fail. Uh, even in, uh, in, if we're talking real life, unless I have a QB who can actually execute it and run a sort of read option with wide zone, um, I'm not running that from a, a offset or a sidecar, whatever you want to call it, from a gun set whatsoever. I'm either going to be in single back or under center or pistol, and I'm going to have that, that running back directly behind the quarterback in the center. 
Um, so that's kind of what I look at from a running back perspective. When I go to wide receivers, I don't need the studs of the world. Like I, you know, Green Bay was fortunate to have Devonte Adams, which is like God's gift to wide receivers. Um, aside from him and just him being able to do what he could do, if you were to look at my stats in years past, I didn't like just force feed him all day. Um, I am going to let a lot of the plays develop. Um, a lot of the concepts within the wide zone offense from a drop back passing perspective are pure progression. So it's going to be um, one to two to three to check down or three to four to check down, depending on how the route, uh, what the concept is and routes distribute and what you're going to call against it. I'm going to find the answer against you and I'm going to make you pay for it. I don't give a shit who it is. Um, so it's not as important for them to be uh, outstanding wide receiver. What I do care about is um, I want decent size in my X and my Z. So I'm going to want them to be, you know, six foot plus easy um, and 200 pounds plus easy. Because um, if we're looking at wide zone, who's going to be able to, to tackle my ball carrier? It's going to be my force defender that if I don't have an answer for, I'm going to need to block with a, a, a wide receiver or somebody, right? Um, and then from there, it's going to be a safe or corner. Well, I'm going to want those guys on the outside. What's going to make five, six, seven yard gains into 30 yard gains is going to be blocking at that second and third level. So I want wide receivers that are able to do that. And in our, our season right now, I have... God, I don't know how tall he is, but he's 220 plus Alan Lazard at my Z wide receiver, my wide receiver two, if you're looking at your Madden depth chart. Um, and he's going to be to the strong side. Like that's, uh, you know, a great thing that I'm going to have. And he's 90 speed. He can run routes. Like I don't care as much about the precision of which he's running routes because I know more of how those are going to break, when those are going to break, how many hitches I need to take. Um, in the respective drop to make sure I get to a good place in the pocket to hit that throwing window to that receiver that it's not as important for them to be the best thing since sliced spread in terms of running the route. My X receiver is going to be my number one overall receiver in general. Right now, That's he's even a lower overall than Alan Lazard, but that's Christian Watson. You know, he's got, you know, decent speed, 93 plus whatever speed rating um which isn't as important for me but um I, overall he's going to be a little bit more athletic and when we look at my slot wide receiver uh i'm going to old faithful randall cobb um who's a t- prototypical slot receiver smaller guy um quick t- twitch guy running shorter routes um, so I don't need him to dig out a, a flowing linebacker play side as much. I need him getting his way, but I care more about the routes that he can run, catching in traffic, things like that. Um, so that's at least the skill positions on offense. When you look at offensive line, uh, the big things that I look at first and foremost is speed. Um, I want somebody 65 plus in speed. Um, cause I want them to be able to get to second level after they, you know, they're working a specific double team. They have the awareness to get the second level. I want them to get the second level. Now I want that linebacker engaged by that offensive lineman as deep as I can. So that helps solidify and dictate reads for my running back to make my run game easier. Uh, when it comes to, um, pass blocking yes it's important I get the ball out fast enough that it's not really a big issue where I need people to block forever in a day Um, because when I I forget who essentially codified these these time frames when you're looking at like a three step drop right so let's under center plus three steps or gone catch and throw you know, that's at 1.8 seconds. So I should be hitting my first read in 1.8 seconds if it's that depth of a drop, which means the routes that are tied to that quarterback drop is 
aligned with that. So, um, you know, let's say I got um, double slots to the left, right? Or I got twins to the left. So I have a slot receiver and outside receiver to the left hand side. And they're both running slant versus a two high coverage. So I'm going to probably work that side, right? I have inside receiver on a slant, outside receiver on a slant. I'm working inside to outside one to two. Collision, the slot. Okay, that's my three step or my, my catch, you know, set and throw from a gun perspective. I'm going to take one more hitch back as a three step concept. I want to get space from that defensive line deliver that ball to my second read which is going to be that outside slant um, coming behind that collision slot receiver um, so that my drops marry up with the actual route concepts that are happening so that is where you're going to get a lot of the marrying of the west coast um, passing drop back passing offense in with the wide zone offense Um, so you don't need again special receivers to do that you're obviously going to develop those route running archetypes within that. Um, but I'm going to be looking for bigger body wide receivers to help me accomplish that. And I'm like, and so I kind of got away from offensive line. I apologize for that. But um, so that's, you know, all of the things that we're talking about from being able to throw those types of routes and that timing. So 1.8 seconds for three step, 2.4 seconds for five step game. And then, you know, three seconds for seven, seven step drop back game. I'm getting that ball out faster, especially in Madden 22 versus the defense's ability to rush the passer. And from what I've tested in the beta for Madden 23, that definitely progresses um, a lot faster in terms of how they're rushing up the quarterback. Um, and their timing, which I love because it's going to add more challenges and people that just continue to drop back, drop back, drop back and with a quarterback and continue to drift, they are going to find out quick, fast, and in a hurry, that's a bad strategy. And that they need to learn how to navigate a pocket with a quarterback. Um, but, you know, more of my strategy from an offensive line perspective is towards the run game. Um, and being able to work those double teams to second level so that's speed and awareness to me Um, and with the third attribute that I care about is run back or run block for Ness excuse me Um, which is you know the key attribute for a zone blocking scheme and then when you look at our tight ends they're the possession archetype uh, but they're, you know, kind of between a possession and a vertical passing offense. I forget what the archetype is. I need them in the scenario. Like, let's just go back to the scenario I talked about earlier with outside zone strong to an under front where that tight end is going to be solo blocking that Sam linebacker. I need them to hold up. I need them to hold them up for a couple seconds. I just need a hat read one way or another. They can get beat on that block. They can get shed inside and that, that Sam back. Sam linebacker trying to make a hero of himself where he just took himself out of the play, gave me the good read to continue to the outside. And, you know, then you've got a uh, DB's corner trying to tackle running back. And, you know, I like that, uh, that matchup from there. Um, that's what I need out of a tight end from a blocking perspective. Um, but from a passing perspective, um, catching in traffic, that short to mid route running is, is really what I need there. If you look at my stats from an offensive standpoint, they're going to be one of the more targeted um, receivers as I'm releasing, you know, four to five out into any sort of respective um, concept. They're going to be one of the more targeted ones just because of how they fall in the progression, not because, you know, I use the Packers where Robert Tanyan is like the best thing since sliced bread. Um, he's the next um, Kittle. Like it's not that necessarily. He's he's the next in the progression. I need him to be in a spot, and I need him to catch the ball when I throw it his way. So offensively, you know, with all those groups, and why I go to tight ends last um, because they're a, a hybrid of both the blocking that I need and some of the passing responsibilities that I need. That's what I'm looking at from our, an archetype or, or attribute standpoint with my my respective offense. Do you find that there's any positions that 
um, what you need from them to be good is maybe undervalued by most people or isn't factored in as much into that overall uh, equation. So they, you know, they may look like a 68 overall that everyone else would scoff at, but you know, for you, it's just fine as long as they have X, Y, Z. I think it's a little bit more specific if you go by position group. Um, so I think where that might play um, into my offense more frequently than not is going to become come with uh, the tight end group. So um, in the wide zone offense, if you look at any of those playbooks, let's just say um, Shanahan with the 49ers, I know that that 2018 playbook is out there or even a little bit further back. I want to say it's like 2013 and 2014. Uh, McVay, when he was offensive coordinator with the Redskins, um, you're going to see F um, as a designator for not only like the the tight end two or the backup tight end on the depth chart, but you're also going to see that for the slot wide receiver. Or, I mean, hell, even with the 49ers, that's going to be the legit fullback. That's going to be juice check. That is the adjuster on the offense, and depending on the formations you want to present, that's going to be somebody who's going to be on the field more. And you just got to dictate what that personnel is to identify who's going to be in that F position at any given time. And so for me, in my particular version of the offense, I'm more 11 personnel and 12 personnel. So three wide, um, one back, one tight end, three wide receivers for 11 personnel. And then one running back, two tight ends, two wide receivers for 12. So running back, tight end, one, two, that's the personnel that we're calling, right? So um, in that, I'm going to need somebody who's going to be, who can move, who can block um, and catch when I need them to, right? Um, especially if they're the you know, tight end two, they're not going to be the world beaters um, in the league. They're not going to be the George Kittle or the Robert Tanyan or, you know, insert name of uh, marquee tight end here. Um, but that guy can be a 68 overall in my tight end too, and he is going to do wonders for my offense. Um, and again, it's just I need him to be high if he's maybe even low 60s on a good good day right for run blocking finesse and then just you know serviceable um, when it comes to running routes and catching the football that would be my my underrated guy and in most of the offenses at least in our league and i'm sure madden community as a whole is going to be vastly underappreciated and i will take advantage of that all day to stock my wide res- or my tight end room with four guys that look like that Obviously, you have a uh, Packers obsession, and you know you don't really have to normally look at other teams. But you know some of the people that are listening, they may be saying, "Okay, I really want to run this. I'm joining a new franchise right now. Um, what you know should I be looking at on a prospective team to say, oh, this is definitely a good fit?" Obviously, you just went over the archetypes, but if you could only have some of those things, what would you say are the, like, the most important things that you need as a building block to really build from? Offense, and, are you talking offense entirely or just the quarterback? Just just focus on offense, yeah. Okay. Um, I need an accurate quarterback. Um, I don't care as much about throw power. I need an accurate quarterback. I need him to deliver the ball on time. So we're, again, I'm going to tie this back to real life examples of this. But you look at Jimmy Garoppolo, it's like the 49ers to a freaking Super Bowl. And he's going to be cut, traded, whatever right now for Trey Lance, who hasn't had enough snaps into an NFL game to make more to make individuals outside of the 49ers organization really comfortable with where he stands. Um, so to that respect, if you're looking at a quarterback, you don't need Aaron Rodgers. It's definitely great. Um, but I've in earlier iterations where we weren't working off of redesignated contracts where Aaron's got a con, you know, 
a big contract I'm definitely not going to trade. I had Jordan Love. He was like a 71 overall, and I was doing work with his offense, right? Again, it's simplifying reads for the quarterback. You just need him to deliver an accurate ball. It doesn't need to be overly fast. He just needs to get there. and needs to get there on time. Um, and if I'm looking wide receiver wise, I'm, I don't care as much to be, to be quite candid. Like as long as I'm north of 89 speed, um, and they can, they can run some routes. I'm going to work with you. Like I'm going to be able to utilize you as a wide receiver in this offense, even if strong, uh, blocking isn't the strongest suit for you. So let's just say, Let's take the um, LA Rams and you have OBJ, you know, Odo Beckham Jr. Like that dude is not making money to block. Um, but he's going to get in the way enough for me to make, you know, do whatever I need to do to stay on schedule with that offense. Um, if anything, I would invest more in offensive line offensive line making sure I have tight ends that are above 80 speed um because if your sub 80 speed is a tight end I don't I can't do much with you in the passing game and with the um the play action the boots the the shot plays with play action and you're including tight ends if they're not able to get up the field quickly versus that second level and a lot of people like to use their second level defenders especially inside linebackers whether they understand those responsibilities or not they're going to try to match whatever those that intermediate over route is going to be and those tight ends are going to be on that a lot and if they're slow then you are going to have a bad day and you're going to have to check down a lot more than you want to versus somebody who's a little bit more athletically inclined so um offensive line and you know getting those more athletic guys are going to be able to get upfield and do what you want to in the run game even if it's just getting in the way of the defense uh, long enough for you to run past them and then, you know, those tight ends. Those are the things I care about more um, from a, you know, a Madden ratings perspective than, um, you know, some of those high overall players. That's really fantastic. I know on behalf of everyone in the community, we're all really looking forward to you finishing your guide on the wide zone. We all really want to dive into everything you've got to teach. And I just want to say, for, if you're listening and you want to uh, chat with Scott, he is usually pretty active in our server. Uh, the link is in the description below. Um, and we have several other guys that are that are experts at different various schemes that are always willing to help. Um, do you have anything you want to add here at the end before we let everyone go? Uh, not really. I mean, the biggest thing that I would say is um, not only just for your enjoyment in playing the game of Madden, but your overall enjoyment of watching football is to, to whatever degree you're comfortable or, or willing to dedicate that time, is to learn as much as you can. Um, there's plenty of coaches, and I say coaches specifically, um, on YouTube that have videos out there for you to learn just a couple tidbits to enjoy and appreciate the game of football more for the, the depth of specificity that goes into every single play. Um, and not only is it going to help you as a fan of the, of the game of football, but it will, you know, to whatever small degree will help you make make you better in, in running any sort of scheme you met. I, I want to tack on here too at the end that uh, if you're really interested in wide zone, one of the, the best videos, I, it's, I believe it's still on YouTube, that is out there is an old clip of Alex Gibbs showing cut-ups of the Denver Broncos from 1998. And his commentary throughout the video is some of the funniest things you'll ever hear because he was just, it's very over the top and, and it's pretty funny, but it's also very educational. Some of the clips of watching that 98 team, which was, they could have gone undefeated. They they rested everyone and just chose to go 14-2. and two. But they easily could have gone sixteen and zero if they kept their their pedal to the metal. Uh, that that's definitely a classic team to to study for this offense. Are there any other classic wide zone teams? But before we get out of here, that you really feel are you know uh, idyllic or you know they they hold the standard. Um, 
for me, in my memory, it would be maybe that 94 Niners team, the 98 Broncos, some of those Arian Foster Texans teams. And then obviously all the success here in recent years, with McVay and, you know, Kyle. But for you, is there a specific team and year that, that stands out to you? Well, I'll, I'll first address the, the Gibbs video you're talking about, that um, that cool clinic that he did for all, um, offensive line coaches, etc. Um, it hurt every bit of my soul to watch those cutups where he, the Broncos in the second half of Super Bowl 32, just just destroyed and dissected the Packers defense where I thought we would have back-to-back Super Bowls when I was, I don't even know however old I was. Um, and, you know, one of the things I love about Alex Gibbs um, and every single clinic video I've seen of him is when <laughs> he said if he would go to a, a school or a team or what would have you, whatever level of football, he's like, if I see you pulling anybody, I'm walking out. Like there's no gap scheme crap here. I'm help, here to help you with the zone scheme, and if you're not running that, I, you're not worth my time. Um, so I, I, I'm paraphrasing to what I said, but I just love that about him. And you know, when I get guys in the league that are talking about wide zone, and um, I asked a question in our in our league chat, um, you know, what's your favorite wide zone play? And somebody commented in there about power and counter, and how they really love that as a core part of their scheme. I wanted to have like that gif like get out like that 19 like the black and white 1920s movie like get out like <laughs> this is a tendency breaker for us guys this is not where we're hanging our hat um but you're right so the, the the 98 broncos is a good example um if i'm just going to talk about the the basics of how the the offense works i would say the year the God, what was that 19 maybe when the 49ers went to the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. I can't remember what year that was. Um, and then before that, yes. watch everything Watch everything before uh, McVay, and I think it was 18 season, before they went to the Super Bowl, and they figured that out. Um, because you, if you want to understand the crux of this system and how it plays... Um, where Shanahan in 19 is going to show you more gap scheme kind of stuff um, because he's more diverse in respect. Um, But just to get to the fundamentals of the scheme in itself, 2018 LA Rams is going to give you a good fundament or foundation, I should say, um, of what you're looking for here. And then the the last thing thing I would say to that, and and I don't know if this is going to be your follow-up question, but why I say all the way up into the Super Bowl, you can also throw in the Bears. I don't know if it was a playoff game. It was the last game of the season, whatever it was, where Fangio, um, and I guess we're going to get this in another pod when I talk about the Fangio Staley like scheme and how it's coupled with Saban and Pruitt and Kirby Smart, right, to become my um, very biased opinion of the best game in, in defensive football. But um, where they were able to succeed in, in those games, and it's, I mean, if you're going to watch where they did well, the 2018 Rams, you need to watch where they failed. And that's going to be in the Super Bowl versus the Patriots, which some people call the most boring Super Bowl. But I'm sitting there with like a bucket full of popcorn, getting really excited about the kind of football I'm watching. Um, or they're creating a lot of solo blocks out of the front side of wide zone. And um, and even on the backside, and, and you're going to see that in Madden with the four three six one even, which they called in both Belichick system and Fangio system tilt front. So it's basically a six one right front. So that way you're not getting the double teams, you're not getting the second level. And I'm going to run my well. And let's just give them a taste. Let's not get too time. far into the Fangio stuff. I want to you know leave that as a <laughs> teaser for next time. Um, one last question on, on wide zone, and then I, I promise, guys, we're going to sign off. Um, you had mentioned that 2018 Rams team, and before the Super Bowl, they they were that offense was a machine, and a lot of the things that they were really doing seem like they've integrated their way into Madden in the last few years, and probably even some more of it with all the new wide zone stuff coming in 23. But they had the jet sweeps, they had the the pop passes, really. The um, 
they had the the zone off of that action. But the other thing that they did a lot, it seemed, was the the gun play action, and then Gurley would release it to the and like a screen, he would keep running into the flat, and no one would cover him. Uh, they did that a whole lot, and it always worked for some reason. And a lot of those kind of play action and gun plays are in the game now. Do you think that that style of of wide zone can be effective in Madden? I know that isn't exactly your flavor personally, but what are your thoughts on that? Um, so to quickly address the example you brought up, the play action to Gurley, boot away from it and throw it back to Gurley is not even in that. Um, the most recent example that I've found just from what I still have is NCAA 14 that plays in there. Um, I wish they would bring it back, but it, irrespective of that. What I would say as you're talking about running these schemes in Madden and there, these schemes influence on Madden and the development of playbooks is um, the most innovation in these playbooks that people have griped for so long is within this offense. And when I look, looked at playbooks um, within Madden 23 beta, um, I got super excited about what's coming. Um, just in terms of the, the basic, at least drop back passing plays and adding more actual wide zone plays into Madden. Um, that's where a lot more of the offensive playbook innovation has come in recent years, specifically with this offense. So it makes it easier to replicate. And even in Madden 23, it's going to be easier to replicate um, as long as your league doesn't have too many very super restrictive rules when it comes to re- um, condensed formations um, that don't overly impact um, route uh, or zone defenders as much as I would want them to think because they don't understand how to defend it. Thank you so much for joining us for the uh, Talking Schemes podcast. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the like down below. Make sure you check out our Discord server and of course also have a Patreon down below where we have tons of guides and other resources for the Madden community.